Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm Randy Thompson, sitting in for the vacationing Sam Shad. Today, we'll be talking with Celeste Johnson, the CEO of Applied Companies, about, well, why is it so hard to find good employees right now? Coming up on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Forty years ago, Hotel California and the theme from Rocky were number one on the pop charts, and D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal started on the road to becoming Nevada's leading roofing company. I couldn't be more proud of what we've achieved. And over these 40 years, we've become an employee-owned company. So when you're talking to any employee, you're talking to an owner. And here's to the next 40 years. Happy 40th birthday, D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. ProGroup Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. ProGroup Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. ProGroup Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And we're back on Nevada Newsmakers with Celeste Johnson. She's the CEO of the Applied Companies, and it's the first time you've been on Newsmakers. It is. Thank so, you for having me. Well, welcome. So, tell folks a little bit about the Applied Companies. Thank you. Yes, the Applied Companies were really three divisions of workforce type solutions. So we have an executive search division, uh, and those are your higher level positions that um, often require extensive recruiting. So think of CFO level, sort of the C-suite type positions. And we have a staffing company, um, and staffing is actually how we originally started in Reno in 2002, um, and that is your temporary labor. And then we have a third division called a PEO, Professional Employer Organization. And that's uh, HR outsourcing. So we work with a lot of small businesses and we do their HR for them as well as their benefit administration, payroll work comp. One of my one of my clients is the National Federation of Independent Business, mm -hmm. so I work with a lot of small business owners, yep. and they don't have the resources. They don't have the ability to right. hire HR people and to have the lawyers and get the labor guidance and stuff. So it really is PEOs are a, a great resource for small business. They really are. Um, one of the biggest risks for a small company, small to medium size, is a potential lawsuit mm -hmm. or not staying in compliance with wage and hour. So um, entrepreneurs are great. They're good at what they do. But then there's all this HR stuff that goes with it. Yeah. And this is a great solution for them because they don't have to learn all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and they can continue to grow their business with um, whatever their vision was when they originally started. That's cool. Yeah. So you've been with Applied for how long? I've been with Applied since 2004. Okay. Um, so a long time. And then I actually purchased the company last year okay. from a retiring owner. Okay, Jim yeah. Annis is a great guy. I yes. love Jim. Yes. Um, so Jim. <laughs> 2004 to now, what a difference in a labor market. We went through Completely. a horrible recession mm -hmm. and now we're back up to where I can't find anybody to hire. Oh my goodness, tell me. I know. So <laughs> since 2004, I've seen the cycle. Um, 2004 through 2006-ish, 2007, 
was great. And a lot of times we reflect back to now being similar to that, but I right. think we're even beyond that, at least here in Northern Nevada. Really? Oh, wow. Um, okay. In terms of workforce, and we can, we yeah. can certainly talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then 2008 hit, and it was um, uh, especially impactful to like our staffing company, mm -hmm. um, our PEO clients. Uh, stayed with us, but they would lose workforce during that time. They had to downsize. Right. Um, and it was really an employer market in mm -hmm. 2008, 2009, right on through 2012, 13. Um, employers really got to have talent. There was a line out the door for them to find people. They could yeah. kind of pay what they wanted to pay, and they could make their own rules. Completely different situation yep. now. Yeah. Yep. So what is, how is it nowadays, especially in Northern Nevada, but I know Southern Nevada is just as bad. This it's, is a statewide it's show. It's actually, so. it's a national issue. Yeah. Um, we might feel the impact a little bit greater here in Northern Nevada because we've had some tremendous growth beyond even the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Nevada has made a lot of top lists for a yep. very attractive state to do business. Mm -hmm. um, so with that comes some workforce pressure, um, but it's, it's really national level. Uh, record low unemployment level here in Northern Nevada, we're at currently at 3.6. That's full employment. Yeah. Um, there, is, there are more jobs than there are people to fill them. I think I was looking at Indeed and it says something like 40,000 job vacancies in Nevada. That's right. Yeah. And we have at any given time maybe 8,000 that are moving around into the workforce. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do the math. Yeah. It's, it's tough out there. Mm -hmm. So we have a great economy and there are a lot of really great things and exciting things happening with that. A lot of entrepreneurial opportunity. Um, but there is this side of it that maybe is not talked about as much, and it's the struggle of a workforce, how to find them, how to retain them, um, and what to do with this tremendous wage pressure we're feeling, too. So I saw an interesting stat. You're part of the Northern Nevada Network that I help yep. run, and I do this newsletter, and I just mm -hmm. saw a statistic I had never heard of before. Yes. Quitting Quits. Yep. is at a higher rate than, I guess, historically. Isn't that interesting? So mm -hmm. people are quitting their job because they can find another job. And right. that's a good thing. And I thought, why would quitting a job be a good signal? But it is a good signal for an economy. It, it is a good signal. Our quits, quits, quits. actually, yeah. which is not a, an overly talked about statistic that we watch. We all watch unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, but are we watching the quits rate? Currently, it's at 2.6. So for comparative purposes, um, in 2008, for example, it was like at 1.2. Okay. So it's more than double. What that means is workers have absolute confidence that they're going to find another job. Okay. So they have no issue quitting. There are good sides to that. There are downsides to that, yeah. um, as you can imagine. Well, it makes employers have to make, and they got to work to retain them. That's right. Yeah. Yep, and work is the correct word. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy, um, and we may talk a little bit further about that, um, but to do the right thing with your workforce right now is extra work, um, yeah. and there's got to be some strategy behind it. And I've also seen that wages are increasing mm -hmm. at around a 4% rate, mm -hmm. which is a higher than normal rate. So not only yep. are people feeling more confident yep. that they can quit and find another job, they're actually right. getting paid more, too. They're getting paid more yeah. and with <laughs> lesser skill. Um, oh, interesting. So it, it is interesting. Okay. Uh, there, you know, there, people really settled in for those five, six years following the recession. Now they're demanding the higher wages. Okay. Um, and employers are not finding the skill set in the wage range that they've budgeted for. Right. Uh, so we've got pressure there. And a lot of businesses can't recover the revenues fast enough to make up for that, that wage in their budget. Um, so it all takes time, mm -hmm. but the trajectory that we've been on with this increase, increased wage pressure is faster than a lot of companies can go out and recover. So we talk to warehouse companies, for example, every day. A warehouse worker that was making $13 an hour a couple of years ago is at $16, $17 an hour, no drug tests, no background. And how does that owner oh, of that warehouse geez. recover to pay that? I mean, at some point, where do we land here? And I, I remember talking to Joe Dutro, who owns Kimmy Candy. He said, if, mm -hmm. you, if I increase my rate, he has about 
26 employees. Yep. He goes, a dollar increase per employee is about $80,000 a year. Absolutely. So when legislators yeah. talk about increasing the wages yes. $3 an hour and you have 200 employees, mm -hmm. the strain on a budget. Very impactful. Yeah. And as we know, it's not just a dollar. The dollar it's went right. to the employee, but we've got our uh, payroll taxes on top of that, yeah. work comp benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so for every dollar, an employer probably has to budget a dollar thirty, a dollar yeah. sometimes even more, a dollar yeah. forty. And there's no guarantee you're going to get that back. All That's right. right. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking now next about some of the workforce development issues. We'll be right back after this. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Because of UMC, there's a wide open road ahead of me. Because of UMC, she can grow up with her twin sister. Because of UMC, I'm here to help you. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And we're back on Nevada Newsmakers with Celeste Johnson, the CEO of the Applied Companies. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Randy. So let's talk about recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, the number one issue I hear from small business mm -hmm. owners is the lack of qualified workforce, the yes. lack of, of skills. Yes. So recruitment probably requires a lot of training these days. So what's some of the advice you give for folks that are recruiting um, workers? Yeah, it's tough. It's really hard to find talent. And I'm a small business, and I understand it's hard to find talent within my own organization. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I would share is to really think about setting, for example, a recruiting budget. I think a lot of companies think, okay, I place an ad somewhere, I'm gonna get some candidates, and then I'm gonna pick one, and off to the races. And it, this is a time when we can be a little bit more strategic and say, okay, it costs a lot for a company to have an open position sitting there. It costs a lot for turnover. Whatever those costs are, I guarantee you setting aside a recruiting budget is going to be less. Um, so whether it's $5,000, $10,000, but if you actually have that as a budget line item, you can do a better job of thinking about how to recruit. So obviously you can place an ad. Um, it's going to be hard to get a lot of candidates. So you also have to look for those passive workers. Um, and those are the people that are already working. So oh, okay. here, let, lean on your networks and your resources. Maybe use a recruiter or, um, an NNN group, for example, is a networking group. Mm -hmm. um, there's resources in those groups. Who do we know? Yeah, but aren't you stealing from another company sometimes? <laughs> Potentially. Um, that so where networking could go bad. <laughs> networking could go bad, I guess. Yeah. Um, but there are, if someone's going to make a leap, there's probably a reason why, too. Right. Um, and then another thing to do is really think about your interviewing process. Uh, it's very easy for someone to say, okay, hey, I'm going to interview you and not give any pre-thought to it. 
Um, there are things that can be done in an interviewing process that really help you find the right fit because you don't want to turn over that person quickly. Right. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, there's behavioral questioning that can be done. Um, and there's plenty of online resources. So um, people can go out and look for behavioral questions. Another thing that um, we have found great success with is behavioral assessments. Mm. Um, and I think you and I have actually talked about this a right. little well, bit because there, was, there a bill was a concern. Yeah, there was a bill at the legislature that wanted to ban them. That wanted to ban them. Yeah. And um, as you know, I was uh, very passionate about that because this can be a huge piece in finding the right fit. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is it the only thing that you do in a process? Of yeah. course not. But it, can it be a, a really critical component? Absolutely. The assessments are not necessarily cheap. So again, back to having a budget. If you tell yourself, I've got some money to spend on this, you're going to feel good about going through some assessments um, and then having someone talk you through what they mean and then you can make a much more informed decision. Well, if you talk about the budget versus the loss of that person and the turnover of that person, Absolutely. I mean, you start weighing the, the yes. money difference going, yep. I need to spend a little more time in yeah. recruitment. Yep. So how difficult, because now we have legalized mm -hmm. marijuana in this mm -hmm. state, how legal, I mean, are, have we just stopped seeing drug testing for marijuana in the workplace? Uh, no, not completely. Okay. I will tell you, in, I have seen it stop in some of the very high turnover positions. So back to warehousing, right. where they need labor in the door. Um, a lot of companies have just done away with uh, a marijuana test altogether. Yeah. Um, more critical positions, I've not really seen a slowdown in the, the pre-employment test mm -hmm. yet. I don't know if that's going to come. I mean, there's a lot of talk, too. There's so many states now that have recreational marijuana that on a federal level this may be coming very quickly and then it's going to become a non-issue uh, in well, that regard. Well, a test for impairment would help, too. Not just the THCs in your body, that's but right. you're actually impaired. Exactly. And we don't have that. Yeah, and that's, yeah. Uh, we could have probably a whole show just on that, <laughs> <laughs> on drug testing policies. So after you've recruited this person, how do you retain them? Yep. What are some of the tricks of the trade you're giving nowadays? Yes, the, this is a great topic. Um, we know that employees want more than just a high paycheck. Now, it needs to be a fair paycheck. It mm. needs to be competitive and in market. You know, you can't pay out of that range of what the market is paying. But if an employer is paying within market, there are a couple of other things that employees really care about. They want promotional opportunities. They want a good culture and they want uh, good managers. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about culture really quick quickly because I love that this comes up a lot and people will say to me often, how do I have a good culture? Mm -hmm. It's not easy. It is a daily commitment to um, addressing it with your staff. Um, so I think about it a little bit like diet and exercise. You've got to do a little <laughs> bit every day. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that goes back to what we said at the beginning of this show is it is work. Yeah. We've got to spend some time and think about workforce and how we're going to approach it. Um, well, let's take a quick break because I got to keep my culture happy. Yep. And we're going to come back and talk a Perfect. little bit more about culture. <laughs> we'll be right. We'll be right back after this. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Are you a homeowner who's interested in remodeling or building a home? At Design Outdoor, we can show you how adding natural or manufactured masonry stone can add beauty and value to your home. And we refer only the best contractors. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bar again because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. 
Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. Joining me today is Celeste Johnson, the CEO of Applied Companies. So we were talking about retention and the culture mm -hmm. that you have, that you really have to create in order to retain. What right. are some of the tidbits, uh, the advice you give uh, employers? Absolutely. Well, certainly the culture, which we, we did talk a little bit about. And then another um, way for employers to have a better retention rate is to think about something called variable comp. So uh, earlier we talked about that wage pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of an employer going right to the top of the scale with wages, which is something that you're committed to with your budget, come up with a wage base and then make the rest of the wage, maybe it's 20 percent, um, that's variable and it's tied to performance. Okay. Harder to manage, you got to really think about it and be strategic, but it does a lot of things. It rewards your star performers, it allows them to make more money, um, and it also doesn't, you as the, as the company, commit you to now a new wage budget that maybe you're getting mediocre performance with. Mm, okay. um, so that variable comp can be a really useful tool, especially in this marketplace. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I actually just recently acquired a small business. We have six part-time employees, okay. and part of their pay is incentivizing them mm -hmm. to upsell a package, yep. and every time they do, they get a percentage of that. So That's I'm, fantastic. I'm, and that was the prior owner. I give them kudos for that. <laughs> yeah, um, but that does, creative. we see how our employees are a little more exercised to go do a little bit more because they're going to make more money out of it too. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it's very rewarding for employees as well. Yeah. They can see what they're earning. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they feel a part, a little bit more a part of the team Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the other big challenge um, is workforce development. Mm -hmm. And we've had a discussion before about high school kids going to college, 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 versus, right. um, and just this week I had Aaron West mm -hmm. from the Nevada Builders talking about, yep. you can actually get a trade and be making eighty dollars to $100,000 right. a few years out of high school with That's no right. student debt. Without the debt. So yeah. where are we seeing that workforce development in the state? Absolutely. Um, you're exactly right. And our this generation, this Gen Z yeah. now that is coming out of high school and into the workforce, is really looking at a four-year traditional education path differently. Um, and as we've seen the stats, year-over-year -year university increases that put them in such deep debt that it takes a long time for them to surpass with their wages. Um, and trade schools are reasonable. A lot of companies are even paying for the trade yep. certificate or the, the trade degree um, and they're getting hired from the company and then the schooling is paid for. The other thing um, that we're seeing is certifications. So students are getting hired by a company on the job training and then they're getting a certificate. So for example, let's say there's a particular software like Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Salesforce, um, some companies will pay for that person to get a Salesforce certification. Oh, if they have that, okay. now we're talking again, 70, 75,000 a year jobs. And this is without going through the traditional university path. Um, also seeing a lot of companies starting to invest in retraining because we know technology is moving faster than careers. And companies are spending millions and millions, AT&T for example, of dollars in planning for jobs that are not even really in existence yet. Um, and so I think that th the business community is already there. Now will our universities start to catch up and think about how that's going to work with this next demographic coming through? I don't know. Well, and that's part of the communication that we need, the business community needs to have, and I know that's mm -hmm. part of a lot of what we do at the Northern Nevada Network, yes. as, as well as other groups. You're seeing private sector and public sector getting together that's and right. having those conversations. I think we need to, yeah. absolutely. We yeah, because a lot moving. of the workforce is undefined at this moment. We know the next maybe five years, but do we know the next 20? It, not really. Well, and not it, like we used to. And are you looking to at artificial intelligence taking over some jobs? Absolutely. And how are businesses planning for that? That's true. Yeah. And that so 
the AT&T example. They already know this is coming. This technology is coming. What will those jobs be? We don't even know yet. Mm -hmm. But we've got to start thinking about retraining um, because, again, this all comes into the cycle of um, uh, retention mm -hmm. and turnover. So we don't want to lose employees. That's too costly for companies. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper to retain them. But how do we retrain them for jobs that we don't even know exist yet? We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, earlier I had Caleb Cage on, and he actually used to uh, head up the Veterans Affairs Division mm -hmm. for the state of Nevada. And I talked a little bit about the role of veterans in the workforce. Sure, absolutely. And they're my new one percenter, because he said veterans are one percent of our population. Um, but there are, they seem to be an untapped resource. They have incredible training from the military. Absolutely. Are you seeing veterans getting more engaged? And, and how can we get employers, I guess, to, to mm -hmm. look at veterans as a resource? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think think, well, it goes back to this marketplace. So mm -hmm. we've got so many jobs um, that I think that th there are veterans working. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some economic things starting to happen. We're starting to see little indicators that things are slowing. Um, we know that the hires are not up as high as they used to be. Okay. Now, we haven't seen layoffs yet, right? Um, but we don't see the hires increasing, and we're seeing the unemployment rate tick up just a smidge. Mm -hmm. I think that where this conversation goes is what's going to happen in the next two to three years. Then absolutely we need to continue to engage employers in looking at all aspects of the workforce, especially veterans, because they have tremendous transferable skills. It is. It's amazing. Well, thank you for this. I'm sure we'll have you back again to hopefully keep talking about our positive yeah. in, you know, positive economic structure. That's right. We'll appreciate your time. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Randy. We'll be back right after this. A bird's eye catches its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culp of Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Well, thank you for watching and listening to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm Randy Thompson. Check us out anytime at nevadanewsmakers.com and on YouTube. Thanks again.